Many of the things said in this video are either rumors or unconfirmed, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. Please treat this person as if they've passed away. Please do not try to reach out to family or loved ones and treat them with respect. Thank you. Welcome to Basement Talks. This is episode number one. The mystery of Sergio Rasta. The years of 2011 to 2013 were an interesting time for comedy on YouTube. I speak for most people when I say that most of the stuff people found funny in this era has aged horribly. But one type of channel that has stood the test of time is social commentary and skit channels. They were more relatable and made light of situations that young people like myself would find ourselves in. Some people in this category would be Super Ego, Ryan Higa, JK Films, Travi Based, and Sergio Rasta. Un jovencito de Chicago quien a través de sus videos se ha convertido en todo un personaje. No sabía que de, de YouTube y de Facebook y todo eso que iba a ser algo grande. But when a beloved entertainer falls off and mentally declines on camera, then disappears without a trace, what should we believe? Sergio uploaded his first video in 2011 titled Make It Rain. It immediately went viral on Facebook and YouTube and people began to tune in. I really did not think a lot of people were going to comment. I thought, you know, only five or three people were going to comment and actually care, but you guys care. Oh my God, <laughs> you made me cry. <laughs> no, seriously. Although the format was simple, many people were drawn in by his fun-loving nature and humor. It was obvious he didn't fear being judged and he enjoyed making people laugh. He was full of life and charisma. He would find a lot of success through these videos. Some notable ones are Annoying Girls on Facebook and How to Win a Guy's Heart. Sergio was very well known in his hometown of Chicago, Illinois. His fan base primarily consisted of young Mexican and Latino people. Yeah. Hey, what's up? He would often be spotted by fans at local malls, grocery stores, and would gladly take photos with them. He was somewhat of a hometown hero and was beloved by many. Sergio Rasta is the best delivery man in the world. Sergio Rasta is the best delivery man in the world. <laughs> Sergio Rasta is the best delivery man in the world. Yes! Thank you so much. His most popular video to date is Annoying My Mom Part 2. This video launched Sergio into a different type of YouTube stardom. I'm tired of you. I'm Why are you annoying? <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm tired of what you say. Okay, I'm tired of- The peak of his success was in 2012 where he was gaining hundreds of thousands of views on a weekly basis. It wasn't until 2015 that Sergio's channel would see a decline in uploads. As a result, his views and subscribers began to go down. He revealed that his inconsistency on YouTube was due to personal roadblocks as well as having a child at a young age. This would be a challenge for anyone. But in the following years, he would be the subject of much controversy that would hurt his reputation more than anything before. My goal with this section is not to throw dirt on Sergio's name, but I feel in the context of his disappearance, it is important to mention all the facts surrounding his disappearance. Sergio had dishonest business practices, to say the least. No one really understands why he began to hustle people. Maybe he needed the extra money to support his family or to continue his unhealthy habits. But either way, it is undeniable that he did. The first known scam happened in 2015 when one of Sergio's fans bought some Yeezys off him and never received them. He went on to upload a video to YouTube detailing his experience. As unbelievable as it sounds, this video is to expose uh, these famous YouTubers that goes by Sergio Rasta. Sergio's scams have been proven time and time again by many people across the internet. His scams range from posting merchandise and never sending the product to promising money in exchange for bank account information. There's even a Twitter page named Sergio the Scammer dedicated to exposing him. This continued throughout the following years, 
But in early 2018, they would reach a new height. Sergio would claim that his Facebook and Twitter were hacked, and he would post fake items in order to lure his fans into sending him money. Nobody would receive anything, and once people would call him out and ask for their money back, he would fall back on the guys that it wasn't him, but the hackers. We know this now to be a lie. Personally, I think it is a little messed up that he would take advantage of the people who gave him his platform. It definitely showed a different side of Sergio beyond what we saw on camera. It got to the point that every other post he was making was one of these attempted scams. Nobody was taking him seriously. He began to lose close friends and local support from fans. Scammer. You know you hit rock bottom when you sell everything you own. I want my $300 back. He scanned me. This dude scammed a cancer patient for 50 bucks, SMH. Even those close to him would come out and help people get their money back. It seems as though everything began to fall apart for Sergio. And then, suddenly, nothing. Sergio went silent in mid-2018, and nobody really questioned it. It wasn't uncommon for him to stop all activity online. He had done it numerous times in the past. Like many people, I thought that Sergio was simply taking some time off from the internet. That was until 2020, when a Twitter user posted this. I had the same reaction as many others, shock and in disbelief. How did this happen? When did this happen? Why didn't anyone know? Like wildfire, many people began to do their own research on Sergio's supposed death. Fans would all find themselves stumped after researching. No public obituaries available online, no news article, nothing in the public record detailed anything pertaining to him. There's so much mystery surrounding this case, but here are three of the most popular theories regarding Sergio's disappearance. Theory one, Sergio simply decided to get off social media and go ghost. This theory is the most simple, but also the least likely. He was a guy who was well known in his community. I just don't think it's possible for five years to go by and nobody has spotted him to put these rumors to rest. Many have claimed to have seen Sergio since then. But until it can be confirmed, this is just another rumor blowing in the wind. Theory two, Sergio moved to Mexico or some other country in order to escape his debts. We know that Sergio was an avid scammer and people weren't afraid to retaliate against him. Many posts were made calling him out and threatening him. Sergio was also a big gambler. He would go to casinos as well as use online betting websites to support his addiction. The mind of an addict can sometimes not think straight and the consequences of his actions may have caught up to him. Many people believe that he may have scammed the wrong person or people, which in turn forced him to flee. Chicago can be a violent city and Sergio lived on the south side in Little Village a neighborhood that has a history of gang violence as well as cartel involvement. He may have not been streetwise and attempted to scam someone who did not take it lightly. Although this theory is possible, I believe it is something of fantasy and highly unlikely to have happened. The cartel and gangs are hard to escape. I believe if they wanted to see a public figure like Sergio dead, it would have been very easy to get a hold of him. Sergio also had two kids and a family that cared about him. I don't think he would have up and left all this behind. Again, this rumor was perpetuated by people on social media, but not based on anything factual. Theory 3. Sergio passed away in some kind of accident. One idea floating around the internet is that he died in a car accident. One of the first YouTubers to cover his death was Eminem Sensational, where she claimed that through word of mouth, she heard that Sergio died in a car crash. A lady mentioned to my aunt, you know, that Sergio Rasta died in a car crash. Now, I am not sure if it's true or not. I am, like, speechless right now because... Although she seemed genuine, 
it's pretty easy to disprove this. Car crashes, especially fatal ones, are usually covered very well by not only the media, but also police departments. These records are public and easy to find. A simple search through this database disproves this theory. One aspect of Sergio's private life that not many people were aware of was his drug use. According to people close to him, he would take Xanax as well as other painkillers. Although it is very hard and very rare to overdose on Xanax, abuse of painkillers and opioids is a nationwide issue that leads to over 16,000 deaths per year. And when you mix these two together, it's all the more dangerous. This leads us to Sergio's last ever stream that he would upload. In this live stream, he was laying in bed while doing his usual online betting. But something was off. But yeah, if you guys want to um, buy my Twitter account, verify Twitter account, and my YouTube channel, it won't come cheap, but it's worth the investment. Throughout the live stream, it's obvious that Sergio's on something. His speech is slurred, his movement's impaired, and he can barely open his right eye. The inability to open his eyes is a sign that whatever he's on is heavily impacting his sensitivity to light, a common side effect of many prescription painkillers. This is direct evidence of his drug abuse, and it very well may be possible that he did in fact overdose. This leads me to the most compelling evidence in this case. This was posted by the mother of Sergio's child shortly after his death. This post has now been deleted, and many say that the screenshot is fake. I don't know why people think this post is fake. It would be extremely insensitive for someone to fake a post such as this. And how would anyone get their hands on the photo in the post? This to me is the deciding factor in this case. Sergio Rasta, based on what I've seen, did in fact pass away. It is possible for someone who has passed to not have a public obituary. It's up to the family whether or not they want to have that published. His family most likely wanted privacy as they knew a public obituary would garner a lot of attention, especially on social media. There was a suspicious update on Sergio Ross's personal fan page in 2020. Many people were thrown off by this, claiming he was still alive. Some even claimed supernatural forces. But this can simply be chopped up to an update in Facebook software or terms and conditions, which made it appear like he posted when in fact he didn't. Or it could have simply been a family member with his login info. I may have left some of you with more questions and answers. Trust me, after researching this case, I felt the same way. But one thing is obvious from this case. Sergio's gone. Whether passed away or missing, he should be left to rest without being bothered. As of the uploading of this video, his family has yet to make a public statement. And that's okay. Sergio's family obviously values their privacy. And I don't think they should be forced to make any kind of statement. They do not owe anyone any explanations. This case hits home for me. Being Mexican and from Chicago, I remember the impact that Sergio had on the youth in those days and on me. The era when Sergio was most popular was a time many remember as the simpler times, when all of us were just having fun and looking to laugh. Despite the wrong things he did, Sergio should be remembered for what he was at his core. A father, a son, a leader, and someone who was proud of his heritage. Although he didn't show it much, Sergio struggled with mental health. The challenges he faced while being merely a teenager is enough to make most of us crumble. Here was this boy who loved life and chose to spread happiness to others by simply being himself. While becoming a man, he lost his way and he needed something to guide him through a tough time. If you or anyone you know 
is struggling with addiction, please don't be scared to reach out to the National Drug Abuse and Addiction Hotline at 1-800-662-4357. Or you can always reach out to me if need be. This has been Basement Talks, and thank you for watching. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys want to help support the channel, give me a like, hit me with a subscribe, hit me up on social media. I'm taking all sorts of requests for videos right now. Give me a little summary of the case or the topic or whatever you want me to cover. If I find it interesting or cool, I'll go ahead and make a video on it. Over the past couple of years, I've seen a lot of stuff about this case on social media, and I'm surprised I haven't seen a really good in-depth YouTube video on it. I've seen a couple that were decent, but they missed a lot of anecdotal stuff. And I don't know. That's why I took it upon myself to make this video, because like I said, you know, I, I used to be a fan of Sergio. I have the video editing skills, so I wanted to go ahead and make this video. Thank you guys again until the next one.